Welcome back, my friend, to another reaction video. I hope you're having a good day. And if you're not, I hope it gets better. This video is from MN Crime. Let's see what it's all about. Let's go. In all the cases we've covered on this channel, this case is by far the most upsetting we've come across. What follows is never before seen body cam footage as police make a routine traffic stop and discover a truly chilling scene. We'll also show you exclusive security footage, capturing the victim's last moments alive. But first, an investigative report on what led up to this tragic incident and the many ways it could have been prevented. Be warned, we will be covering the flaws in child protective services surrounding abusive parents and why those services need to focus more on helping the victims in these cases over their abusers. This may seem straightforward, but domestic situations can become very complicated in cases where the abuser is the parent of a victim. Let's step back a moment and get some background on what exactly led up to this heinous crime. In December of 2015, Julissa Thaler and Tori Hart's child, Eli Kenneth Alejo Hart, was born. However, their relationship quickly went south. Court summons suggest that Julissa has a long history of substance abuse, including suspicions that she exposed Eli to a controlled substance while she was pregnant. The next line in the summons mentions Eli's genetic disorder, Towns-Brock syndrome, which left baby Eli with hearing loss and cleft feet. At this time, Julissa filed police complaints against Tori. She later admitted to the complaints being false, and that because of her mental health issues, she constantly accuses Hart of things that he doesn't do. After years of custody battles and allegations of abuse, Julissa and Tori undergo court-ordered evaluations. For years, Julissa gains custody of Eli, but struggles with homelessness. In October 2020, Dakota County Social Services find Eli at Julissa's decrepit home, naked and without hearing aids. The social worker on scene could not locate shoes or clothes for Eli outside of a single set of pajamas. DCSS found a flooded upper floor bathroom, eggs broken and smeared throughout the main level, and food in various stages of decay around the main floor. Julissa is hospitalized for mental health issues, but Eli is returned to her care afterward. Around three months later, Child Protective Services again took Eli and placed Julissa into custody on a mental health and welfare hold. Julissa was presenting signs of psychosis and claims that she was hearing voices related to self-harm, among other paranoid delusions. This time, Eli was found with matted hair, cuts on his arms, and without his hearing aids. According to a court summons, Dakota County Judge Timothy Wormiger found it contrary to the welfare of Eli to permit him to remain in Julissa's care because of these eight reasons, which includes Eli Eli's risk of harm, his lack of food, clothing, shelter, and education, along with Julissa's criminal history and psychosis. Over the next few years, Julissa again and again proves she's not fit to be a parent. Throughout, Tori continuously signals to officials his concerns, which continue to go unheard. Here are just a few things Julissa has done, according to a court summons and numerous reports. Julissa told a story of dropping Eli's sippy cup off the side of a cliff in Colorado when he was younger. Her solution? She tied a rope to herself and climbed down to get it, leaving Eli unattended, open to the possibility of him falling off the cliff to his death. During visitation, Julissa berated Eli for the problems in her life and relationship, blaming him for the rotten food in her home, even after rotten food continued to exist in her household after Eli was taken into foster care. Julissa told a social worker she can't eat or sleep and that she was living off Mountain Dew and cigarettes. After Julissa's visitations, Eli would have bathroom accidents, which was not typical for him. Julissa showed Eli disturbing videos she took of cat feces, along with images of naked women. Julissa gifted Eli a smart watch and would call and text him during Tori's visitation time. In the time Julissa needed to better herself for the court to gain custody of Eli, she had the police called on her over 20 times in a 10-month span. Julissa set up a noise machine in her home because she believed neighbors were spying on her. Julissa submitted numerous false police reports of Tori, claiming he was stalking her and was on methamphetamines. Both these accusations and more were disproven. During DCSS visits to her home, Julissa was found to be raising ducks in her living space, despite her attempts to hide them during inspections. Two separate landlords kicked her out for causing problems. Julissa reportedly drove erratically when dropping Eli off at school, speeding on multiple occasions, and supposedly left tire marks on school grounds. While at school, Eli told teachers he didn't sleep the night before when he was with Julissa. His behavior also reportedly dropped dramatically at school when he was under her care. Julissa lied to the court about buying tickets to Disney World and did so in hopes that it would expedite the custody process to allow her to leave the state with Eli. Jul well, okay. I know the person from this video, all this information he got and stuff like that, right? But I want to know is, 
with all this information out there, why didn't even the first time something was weird, they didn't just go ahead and hand the kid over to the dad? I don't know how the system works, man, but some people seem like they don't know what type of job they're doing, or maybe they just don't care or don't look too much into it because there's a lot of cases going on and stuff like that. But I'm sure if I was a case worker, the first thing that something really went out that seemed very disturbing, I would really not let the mother or the dad, if it's in the dad custody, keep the, keep the, I'm just saying, keep the child because it's too many cases and they still let her keep the, keep having it. Oh, it just makes me mad, you guys. It really does. It's like, we're all human. Well, I mean, we can tell when somebody shouldn't be with somebody. You know what I mean? It's just obvious. And uh, a lot of people don't do nothing about it because, of course, you got to go through the... Through, through, through. You can't just take somebody, right? You can't because you got to go through all this court court stuff and stuff like that. And, I mean, that's the way you do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't back in the 1700s or 1600s where people would just be like, nope, you're a bad parent. I'm taking the child. You know what I'm saying? Now you got to go through all this stuff like that. But it's sad to see how, even though there's so many cases like this, man, stuff just gets bare or thrown to the side and stuff like that. And the people that uh, end up, like in this case, uh, Eli, uh, get the bad side of everything, man. Because the mama is not okay. And she knows she's not okay, but she still don't want to give up the child. It's just... Her mind's corrupt or something. I don't know, man. But it's just sad to see this kind of stuff, man. But I am. If I see somebody's mistreating somebody or something like that, I'm I'm gonna be like, hey, man, something here's not right. Dodge. I mean, if I'm maybe if I'm misinterpreting the thing, at least I'm trying to make sure something's not bad. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I'm on the wrong, I'll be like, I'm sorry. I apologize. You're a great parent or whatever. I just thought something wrong was going on, and I'm sorry about that. You know. <sighs> Be honest, you know what I'm saying? But wow, this is... Oh, Alyssa stole think? prescription drugs, and during court-ordered drug test, she consistently failed. She also failed to keep up with court-ordered therapy sessions and parenting classes for over a year, and was given multiple 60-day extensions by the court to fulfill those requirements. Throughout all of Julissa's troublesome actions, Tori voiced his concerns for years to officials for the sake of Eli's safety. According to a court summons, here's some communications Tori sent to officials about his custody case and Julissa's actions. I do have concerns with her mental state that she could do something drastic. The whole purpose of this is to protect Eli, yet I feel he is now being being put at risk. What kind of damage is this doing to Eli? This is terrifying to me and upsets me that Eli continues to have to go through this. How is this okay? How will Dakota County monitor Eli's safety and well-being now? Eli is in danger every day he is with her. My son is not safe with her. Who is protecting Eli? Even Eli's caregiver addressed concerns to officials saying, I feel so bad for Eli. I feel he will be injured or worse being back with his mom. Due to Julissa's false allegations against Tori, he agreed to comply with a safety and permanency plan in order to secure permanent custody of Eli. This included completing domestic violence and parenting classes, randomized drug testing, a mental health assessment, and adhering to an order for protection. In contrast to Julissa, Tori fulfilled all requirements. DCSS reported positive visitations with Tori, noting Eli's happiness, energy, and enjoyment during their time together. According to a court summons, DCSS reports can be quoted that, during these visits with Mr. Hart, Eli is noticeably smiling, talkative, energetic, and he seems to enjoy them. Despite the countless negative reports on Jalissa and the positivity and capability of parenting shown by Tori, the court system continually pushed for reunification of the child with their mother over the father. Fast forward to March 2022, Tori filed for custody of Eli in Hennepin County Court, possibly to change the jurisdiction due to concerns about the current court's handling of the case. However, Hennepin Court said they couldn't grant custody due to the ongoing case in Dakota County and could only move forward if the CHIPS case were to be dismissed. Within days, the court moved to dismiss the CHIPS file. Unbelievably, on May 4, 2022, the same defendant who filed all those negative reports against Julissa pushed to remove Eli from court supervision and into reunification with Julissa. Reports made on a later date cited the defendant had no immediate concern for Eli's physical well-being at the time. At this point, Eli had been in foster care for 466 days. 
Despite the recorded evidence that Julissa was not fit to parent Eli, Dakota County Judge Tim Wormiger removed Eli from the county's protection on May 10, 2022. Court summons show that a Dakota County social worker and one of Eli's court-appointed guardians both recommended that Julissa be reunified with her son. Adding more devastation to this case, a hearing was set for the very next day on May 11th as an opportunity for Tori to raise immediate concerns to prevent the reunification. Unfortunately, the hearing was canceled, robbing Tori of this valuable opportunity. Six days later on May 17th, receipts show Jalissa would purchase a shotgun with what was likely dozens of rounds along with a revolver. The receipt even thanks her by name for the purchase. Just three days later on May 20th, 2022, Jalissa would be found driving a vehicle that was missing a tire and had its back window smashed open. Officers would soon pull her over. Yeah, I, think I, I gotta say, that judge, uh, the, 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 I guess the judge, right? That other persons are working on the case, man. I think they shouldn't be working as as what they're working at because it seemed like they didn't even really do a big check on what was going on and everything before all this. Like who? I ain't, I ain't, man. I ain't no judge. I ain't. I'm not professional, man. But if I saw all these papers come at me telling me this person is not fit to be a mother or have their child with them, if I actually did my work, right? Because I don't think they did their work. If I did my work and I actually read everything like, mm, yeah, no, that's not good. You know, oh, what she tried to what? What? No, oh, no, 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 she can't have that child. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what those two people were thinking, man. <laughs> Go ahead. And, yeah, the child's OK. No worry. You know, so he sleeps on food that's all over the apartment and no problem, man. Oh, well, he really don't eat. But the mama, she lives off a of, of Mountain Dew and cigarettes. Oh, OK. What about the kid? What does he eat? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of moms have it hard because they're like a single mom and stuff like that. But I think any mom that really loves their child or whatever, try to do the most they can or the best they can to make sure their children are okay. Even that, if even up to put it like for foster for a while or till they get their stuff together or something. I, you know, I don't know how that works, but I'm just saying, I don't think a mom would like to be carrying their child around if they're homeless. You know what I mean? Like they'll try to either, hey man, sister, man, you know, forget about me, but take my child and I'll try to do whatever I can get back on my feet. You know what I mean? But like these judges and sometimes I don't think they even pay much attention to the cases that are in front of them. I'm not saying they're bad people. They probably got some stuff to do, but I think they should put more effort to realize whoever they're giving the child to might not be fit to have the child. That's sad. I'm just saying, maybe I'm just, but it's just sad to see these type of cases, man. If you agree, let me know down below. If you don't, let me know down below. I'll read your comments. I like reading them. All right, let's get back to it. The windshield was blown out. After a few minutes, two officers approach her vehicle from either side. According to police reports, the officers noticed shotgun shells, blood in the vehicle, and on Julissa herself, and what appeared to be gunshot holes in the back of the car seat. Julissa herself seems overly calm about the whole situation. According to police reports, she claimed the blood on her came from removing a tampon. Other suspicious claims were also made by Julissa, as seen from this limited body cam footage. There is no tire there. All right. <laughs> It's like blood in there. And it's not blood, it's deer meat. I had a big bag of, and there's a farm around here that does deer meat and hamburgers. So. Shotgun shells all over this. Yeah. Despite the incredibly questionable scene the officers discovered Julissa in, the officers decided to release her, personally chauffeuring her a ride home to her apartment. The officers who work in Hennepin County, home to Minneapolis, also may have feared getting a complaint from the woman, factoring into their decision making. According to news reports, the search warrant for Jalissa's vehicle indicated the police released her because she was growing impatient, cold, and refused to sit in the squad. Back at the blood-soaked vehicle, officers developed probable cause and did a deeper search of the vehicle. Yep. Holy we got a body. Oh, yeah. All right, let's cover it. According Ooh, I was going to say, that's the first time I'm like, these police officers had to do more of what they were trying to do, I don't know, but... Did you see that police officer? Like he's he just went like that. He couldn't believe what he saw. 
according to reports, officers rushed back to the apartment where they'd just dropped Julissa off. They discovered she was no longer there. She left a washing machine running with what was later determined to be filled with the clothes she was just wearing. Soon after, officers located Julissa leaving the area on foot, and she was placed under arrest. Officers then observed that she had what appeared to be brain matter in her hair. Based off witness statements and off the physical damage her vehicle left on the road, officers were able to track the past movements of the vehicle. Along this route, they found multiple locations where blood and brain matter had been discarded. One dumpster had a bloody child booster seat that had sustained damage from a shotgun blast. In another dumpster, officers located a backpack, blood, bone, and what appeared to be more brain matter. We've elected to not show the photos containing blood or human remains. In court, more shocking evidence would come out against Julissa. According to a source from CARE 11, these are some of the search terms from Julissa's browser history, which includes how much blood can a six-year-old lose, how life insurance investigates a death claim, and how much does life insurance pay for a dead child, among other damning searches. It was later determined that Julissa had shot Eli nine times in the head and torso area of his body, likely while he was strapped in his car seat. Thorough work by police and detectives also uncovered surveillance video showing Eli being escorted by Julissa in the moments prior to his murder. The video, which shows the boy smiling and playing, would tragically be the last video of the child. At one point, Julissa's own grandmother and father even disagreed with the handling of the custody case leading up to the murder. Julissa's grandmother claimed Tori doesn't have a mean bone in his body and said of her granddaughter Julissa that she is good at manipulating people and I blame the court system for not helping her out. We all told the social workers that she needs to be institutionalized, not just for a month, but maybe for a year or more. But nobody listened. Julissa's father said, I gave the judge her detailed mental health history. I told him that she was displaying paranoia and auditory hallucinations. I said I feared for Eli's safety. It all fell on deaf ears. Julissa did not mince words with how she felt about the situation. Ms. Scholar, you have a right to speak this morning. If you'd like, you don't have any obligation to speak, but if you'd like to choose to speak, now is the time to do it. Yes, I would like to say something. Go ahead. Um, I'm innocent. Thank you all. You're garbage. That's all you're on. Clearly, Julissa's lawyer isn't too happy about her choice of words. Thank you, Ms. Scholar. I don't know that that's appropriate here. Um, Sorry, I told you what somebody else can. Julissa Thaler was sentenced with first-degree predetermined murder and second-degree intentional murder for shooting Eli no less than nine times. She has received life in prison without the possibility of parole. Currently, Tori is in the process of suing the defendants and a caretaker of Eli, who continue to suggest reuniting Eli with Julissa. That outcome is yet to be determined. Unfortunately, this is not the only case of this nature that was mishandled by Minnesota, and more specifically Dakota County and Ramsey County Child Support Services. Most recently, Child Protective Services has again come under scrutiny after allowing a parent with a violent history custody of his children. In this case, it was a father who won custody and would later go on to shoot and kill two Burnsville police officers and a firefighter with a rifle on Sunday, February 18th, 2024, while seven of his children were with him. The standoff ended when the father took his own life. This interview conducted by a source from CARE 11 shows the frustrations that the mother of some of the children has with the way her custody case was handled. Even though their dad is this monster, you know, that's still their father. You know, they had unconditional love for him. And it hurts me because it's like somebody's so evil like that and they still get all the love from their children. He could have took them. He could have done a lot, you know, so my main focus is just to get their mental health in order, you know, because it's not going to be like overnight. It's going to be something that's an ongoing thing. A statement released by Ramsey County in Minnesota has this to say about these kinds of cases. In Minnesota, counties are required by law to work toward family reunification in child protection cases unless specifically accepted by statute. When a parent is found to be compliant with court orders during the period their child is placed out of the home, a child must be returned to the parent's care. Following reunification with their child, a parent is no longer legally compelled to work with social services. A family may also relocate of their own volition. Hopefully, swift changes in how cases like these are handled happen soon to prevent future tragedies. Whoa, that was a video to watch. I was about to say, can't Tori uh, sue? Yeah, I was about to say, can he sue the people that kept on putting his child with 
Julissa's man, her name almost sounds like Judas, you know, but um, yeah, I was wondering that hopefully he can because that's not right. I always think in in everything, there's always people that are willing to work to help people. And then there's people that are just doing their job just for the money, man. To me, it seems like whoever was telling their, those cases was just like doing it just like a job. Like, yeah, I don't care what really happens, but I'm just doing my job. I'm going to get paid and go home. You know what I mean? There's people out there that are actually like, you know, like a lot of people that pretty much work for nothing to help people. You know, there's a lot of lawyers out there that just pretty much work really low wages, but they're doing it because that's something they enjoy, you know? Just like people that are uh, nurses and, you know, you know, there's people out there out there to help people and there's people that are not, you know, they just, I don't even know why they're in that type of career. If they don't enjoy it, they should just find something else. But that is sad to see, man. Like, I hope he does so, because that's so bad. I feel, I feel for, for, for him, for the young one. Don't know what's going on, and th that happens to him. That girl was just, how could you not tell something's wrong with a person like that? And about the thing is, like, I, I, I always believe, like, your family is your family. But other people shouldn't be involved in your family, but. If there's something wrong with a parent, yeah, it's it's a good idea to look for outside help, you know what I mean? And say, man, you know, I love her or I him, but something's wrong with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, maybe the children shouldn't be with them, you know? And that thing about as long as they comply with certain something about the month or something of the court, then the children can go back to them. Nah, man, I think it's there's something wrong with somebody. Uh, they should really go through a certain type of uh, what can I say like tests for a while or to see if they're actually are able to get there I know there's a lot of times where people get messed up over like that you know what I'm saying but it's just hard I guess I'm just saying man let me know what you think man what, what's your thoughts about this man let me know down below also thank you for watching want to watch another video you can watch this one here and also hit the like button it really helps this video out and i will see you next time bye